It's time for more Manifesting Original Rich Bitch Experiences. Each week, we're talking travel, wellness, and millennial musings with a level of refinement. What level? It fucking depends. I'm your host, Ava Bilkey. Welcome back to The More Pod. I'm so happy to be back here with you. It's been a minute. We are ringing in the new year, 2024, with a brand new season of the podcast. So this is season three. And in a lot of ways, I can't believe that we're here. Uh, This has been one of the most consistent things I've ever done in my life, creating a weekly podcast. And as it turns out, I've been enjoying it. And I hope you have been too. So we're back another season full of travel, lifestyle, self-improvement, self-development, growth, expansion. And I have a lot of I have a lot of exciting things in store for this season. So I hope that you stay tuned on this journey. We're gonna kick this season off strong. We've got a travel talk. We've got a travel talk today. We're gonna talk about New York City. If you had asked me a couple months ago, if I plan to visit New York City in the winter time, uh, my response would have absolutely been no. I am well aware and very familiar with cold winter weather, and I don't really need any more of it. But this year started off with a bang, and when I say a bang, I mean a tattoo. So a tattoo appointment is what brought me to New York City. And being the multitasker that I am, I figured we have to make this into a podcast episode. So that's what you're getting today. This tattoo appointment is something that I've been manifesting for quite a long time. So when we talk about manifesting original rich bitch experiences, this is definitely one of them. And I'll tell you all about that. But of course, first we have to touch on New York City, right? So New York City is one of those places similar to London where I feel that it's really hard to summarize. It's really hard to encapsulate a big city, one of the best cities in the world, in a few days, right? Or even within an hour podcast episode. It's really hard to do that. So rather than try to tackle all of New York City (laughs) today, we're just going to talk about Soho. We're going to talk about Soho because that's where I stayed and that's where I was shopping, dining, sleeping, tattooing. So we're going to focus on Soho and I think that's enough. One of my mottos for this year is taking the pressure off and... (laughs) I'm attempting to do that here today as well. So rather than boil the ocean, we're going to take the pressure off and we're just going to chat about Soho. So let's get into it. New York City for me is a city that I have very mixed feelings about. And I have very mixed feelings about it because my personal experience there is always that it's very energetically draining. It feels very taxing on my nervous system to be in New York City. Now, some people absolutely love the energy, right? It's like a constant underlying jolt of caffeine. Go, 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 do, 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 more, more is more. More is always more in New York City. And it can be a lot. Every time I've been there, I've always come home like completely exhausted. But that's not to take away from the experience itself because it's a great time. There's always something to do, always something to see. It's highly walkable. You can go anywhere you want on foot. And then when you get tired of walking, you can just hop in a taxi or an Uber, right? It's a great city. Now, What's not so great about the city is that it's cold in the winter. 
And I don't know why, but every time I find myself in New York City, it's like deep winter. We're talking December, January, February. And this time was no different. And I bring that up because winter in New York City feels different than winter in middle America. Because in New York City, you are more exposed to the elements, right? Like you are walking everywhere. You are out of the house. You are outside. You're not sitting in your car, you know, in your heated parking garage, going from door to door from the office to home. No, this is exposure to the elements. And that is something that should be considered when you're heading there in the winter months. And of course, while I considered it, um, I didn't pack my hat. I didn't pack my winter hat like a damn fool, you know, and I almost bought one. I almost folded. But (laughs) at that point, I'm like, you know what? We've gone 48 hours without one. We're just going to continue riding this train. So all of that to say, depending on the season, I think the experience of New York City is very different, very different. Ideally, this is a spring and fall trip, right? Not a winter trip. Anyways, New York City like London, like Paris, like LA, has a lot of different vibes. And even in Manhattan specifically, there are so many different experiences you can have in the city. And so when it comes to choosing where to stay, I always just end up picking the place closest to my purpose of trip. And A lot of times I end up staying kind of in Midtown, Chelsea area. For this trip specifically, I wanted to head a little bit further south. And I stayed in Soho because, again, I went for a tattoo and the tattoo was nearby in Tribeca. So all good in the neighborhood. But if you're looking at New York City and you don't know where the hell to stay, pick a spot that's closest to wherever you're going for. Because yes, you can always get in a car, take an hour long ride to cross the bridge or whatever it is. Like you can get around and see different things you want to see. But I found that New York City is most convenient when you just stay nearby your reason for visiting. So let's talk about Soho. S is for Soho. And Soho is for shopping. I don't make the rules. I'm just sharing them. Soho is truly the area of New York City where if you want to be shopping, like every store that you could possibly imagine is at your doorstep. And so this is a great entry point for a shopping experience. There's also a lot of restaurants nearby, like everywhere that I went that I'm going to recommend today was a 10 minute walk. So from a convenient standpoint, we love that. We absolutely love that. Um, the hotel I chose to stay at this time around was called the 11 Howard hotel. And this hotel is right in Soho. It's nice. And I think the thing that's funny about New York city hotels is it's like, unless you're staying in the best of the best. Like everything is just like nice. You know what I mean? Like it's not excellent. And if you've been to New York city before, like, you know, this, the hotels are not the most impressive part of the visit, right? Like the hotel is very much a, I'm here to sleep. I'm here to get my little rest if I can, because there's sirens and horns hawking 24 seven, but here's my little spot where I'm going to try to rest. That is the purpose of the hotel in New York city. That said, I actually had a really nice stay at 11 Howard. So whenever I'm looking for a hotel, my basic requirements are room service and slippers and a robe. As long as you have slippers and a robe for me and I can order some breakfast in bed, like I'm going to be good. I'm going to be so good. And Howard Hotel had both of these things. But what I also loved, and especially since it was just a short trip, is the fact that they had some bars and restaurants right in the hotel. 
That was really convenient. They also had an infrared sauna. That's what ultimately led me to book this place. It's like, you know what? I want to go to the infrared sauna and I don't even have to leave my hotel. That's a sleigh. So the sauna location inside of the hotel is actually called Higher Dose. And if you haven't done infrared sauna before, it's essentially a sauna experience with added LED light therapy. And you can choose different colors of light for different purposes. And so red light, for example, is really good for repairing your skin. Um, you know, there's blue light has a certain purpose, green light, purple light, yellow light, orange light, like they all have a different connection. So it's really fun because when you do an infrared sauna, you get to choose the light color for your session based on what your goals are. So the infrared sauna had a great session, 30 minutes, sweat everything out, detox, relaxation, warmth, just in general. Dare I say it even thawed my frozen heart a tiny bit. That was lovely. And again, the best part was I was staying at the hotel. So after my session, I just walked back up to my room and showered and got ready for the day. So that was an added location feature about this hotel that I absolutely loved. And you don't have to be a hotel guest to go. So if you want to go try the infrared sauna, you don't have to stay there. Anyone can book an appointment. I think it's on the third floor of the hotel. And it's just a really nice mind and body reset. That's something I would actually like to incorporate into my routine more frequently. I've done infrared saunas like at the end of a detox or a cleanse. It's kind of like hot yoga at the end of a long week. Something about just sweating it all out and starting fresh. It's like you're squeezing your sponge. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's like you're squeezing your sponge of your physical body. And I would like to do that more often. So highly recommend. The hotel overall was just what I needed, right? It's the perfect home base to explore Soho, walk around, get anywhere I wanted to be in 10 minutes, um, do more shopping than one could ever need to do. And it had the bonus of the sauna. So very happy with that experience. But when it comes to shopping in Soho, like I said, Soho is for shopping and you can't convince me otherwise. I don't actually know what else you would do in Soho if you weren't shopping because that is how many stores there are. And when I say there's any store you can imagine, there is literally any store you could imagine. Everything from your everyday stores like Nike, Adidas, Aritzia, to your very high-end designer stores, Louis Vuitton, YSL, Acne Studios, to even like the more kind of niche brands, things like Theory or Stodd or Majuri or Ghani, like literally any store you could imagine has a location in Soho. It really is a shopper's dream. And I don't know about you, but like in-person shopping for me is an interesting experience. I do most of my shopping online with retailers that offer free shipping and free returns. Like that is the best way in my opinion to shop because you can order like two or three sizes of something, try them on at home, send back the ones that don't fit. And it just feels for me like a more enjoyable shopping experience. However, there are definitely, there are definitely some positives to shopping in person. Specifically, you can actually feel the quality of things. You can feel the fabrics, the materials. Is this soft? Is it crunchy? Sometimes you can't tell online. And so I won't lie. Like that is definitely a benefit to shopping in person. Also, when you're shopping in person, 
you see things that you weren't necessarily looking for, right? So if I go into a shop because I'm looking for jeans, but then I also notice that they have a really cute belt selection, that's kind of a bonus, right? If I was just shopping online, I wouldn't even see the belts because I'm not searching for belts. I'm only searching for jeans. So I think in some ways, when you do shop in person, your eyes are opened up to more possibilities. So that's nice. That is nice. Not going to lie. Sometimes you can also try things on in person, which can be helpful. Although this kind of parlays into the drawbacks of shopping in person in that a lot of times stores don't have my sizes in stock. They never have my size. And I don't know if this is like a post pandemic, like supply chain issue. I don't know if you've noticed this too, but I just find that in-store stocks are not what they used to be. And that's kind of frustrating. It, It defeats the whole point of taking the time to go shop in person. Another drawback to shopping in person, especially in New York City, is uh, the crowds. There are so many people in those stores. Like They are absolutely packed. I made the fatal mistake of going into Aritzia and not knowing that they were having their winter clearance sale. And it was like walking into Black Friday at Best Buy circa 2014. People were acting like if they didn't get that Aritzia coat, they were going to die. It was crazy. I haven't seen anything like that since Black Friday was actually a thing, right? When people used to fight over TVs in the stores, when people used to fight over like wedding dresses. I mean, in the in the peak Black Friday shopping holiday days, like it was chaos and... I felt like I experienced that at the Aritzia winter sale. That's definitely a drawback. Another drawback of shopping in person is that one wrong interaction with a sales associate can ruin your whole experience with a brand. When someone looks at you in a way that makes you feel like you shouldn't be in their store, you're not going to buy anything. You're not going to buy anything. You're going to leave. And sure, could somebody be having an off day? The sales associates just like has a migraine. Sure, that's fair. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that I now have a negative mindset or experience of that brand. You know what I mean? I had a couple of those and I was like, oh, I don't need to come back to this store. Bye, bitch. Shopping in person definitely an experience. I don't know. Like I went in so many stores and I just didn't see anything that spoke to me until, until the very last store I shopped, which was Ghani. I found a bag that I liked. So after two days of shopping in New York city, I found one item that I wanted to purchase. (laughs) And It's a leopard tote from Ghani. It's called their tech tote. So it's kind of like a nylon material, but it's the perfect shape. It's square. It has black handles. It has silver hardware, which for me is the best. If something has gold hardware, I literally don't want it. So the bag had silver hardware, passed the check, and it's just super cute. Like, I had been carrying a really, really small bag, and this is not a big tote. It's still a small bag, but it's much more spacious than what I had been carrying, and honestly, I'm loving having more space. It's nice to be able to put a mini deodorant in your purse and not have it like bursting at the seams, you know? It's nice to be able to put a glasses or sunglasses case in your purse. And I kind of forgot about that. I had just been rocking these small ass bags for so long. But the one thing I didn't get to when it comes to shopping in New York City was doing some vintage shopping. And I'm kind of bummed because I love vintage shopping. However, 
it requires a certain level of energy and I simply didn't have it, you know? So to summarize the shopping, there's literally any and every store you could ever imagine in Soho from your everyday stores to your designer stores, to your niche trendy stores, to vintage stores. There's a lot of stores. And if you love shopping, you will absolutely love spending time in Soho. Now, when it comes to food and drink, much like shopping, there are unlimited choices in New York City and even in Soho. There's a lot of places to go eat. There's a lot of places to have a drink. And we love that. We love that. More is more. What I will say is one thing about traveling solo is sometimes you just don't feel like dining solo. Sometimes I really don't mind it and I'm just fully owning it, doing my thing. But other times I really just don't feel like dining alone. And in New York City, I really didn't feel like dining alone. So I opted for more convenient places this time around. Again, taking the pressure off, looking for restaurants and bars right near my hotel that I could easily walk to, and also places that were a bit more casual. So I find that sometimes a more casual restaurant feels more approachable for a solo diner because there's nothing more awkward than like going to a really fancy date night spot, right? And it's like, why am I getting all dressed up to the nines like to just have a meal, you know? Sometimes you don't feel like doing that. And I share that because it's okay. You don't have to do that. I think sometimes we work things up in our heads. Like we have to go to the best places in town. And really, you just need to go wherever you feel like going. Whatever sounds good and also whatever feels comfortable. So when it came to places in my hotel, the first night... I actually just grabbed a burger at the bar in my hotel. So the bar in the hotel is called The Blonde. And my understanding is that this bar actually turns into a nightclub at night, like a full-blown nightclub where apparently Madonna partied a couple months ago. And having been there, it was really hard to experience it turning into a nightclub, but I guess it does. But it's called The Blonde. I had a nice glass of champagne at the bar, their house champagne. And if you have a house champagne, like that's kind of bougie. I love that. (laughs) And I just ordered a burger my first night. It was really good. It was pretty basic. Again, wasn't looking for anything fancy. If fancy is up your alley, there is a restaurant in the first floor of the hotel called Le Cuckoo. It is a very popular French restaurant, and I think it is Michelin starred, but it's fancy French food. And we're talking like bone marrow, escargot, I don't even know, foie gras, like all the weird parts, you know, like the fancy French food. And that's just not for me. That's not for me. It looked really cute, like the restaurant looked really cute, but no jeans allowed. So if you want to have a fancy French dinner and you want to get dressed up, great spot. However, I opted for something still French, but a little more approachable right down the street. So right down the street is a spot called Le Mercier at the Guild. So this is a French restaurant. It's a little bit more approachable, more like everyday food, you know, steak, fish, chicken, approachable. The restaurant is actually located in a store. So the back part of the restaurant is actually a store. They sell like barware, glassware, things like that. And the restaurant is in the front half. So although that might sound kind of weird, it doesn't look weird when you're there. And the restaurant itself actually has a really nice vibe. 
We're talking white tablecloths, candlesticks on every table, velvet booths, some really pretty floral decorations in the wine bar area. I mean, it was really, really cute. And my dinner here was really good. It was solid. I had a nice glass of French red wine, which we love. And I had the halibut beurre blanc and a creme brulee because why the fuck not, you know? And that was really good. Oh, and of course a bread basket because when at a French restaurant, like you have to eat the bread. It's just, it's just protocol. I would recommend checking out the spot for happy hour. I also hear that brunch is one of the more popular menus. So great spot for brunch, happy hour, dinner, super cute. And I felt comfortable dining here alone. Like, Although it had a nice kind of romantic vibe, the crowd was very much more like a couple of friends catching up. It was nice. It was nice. I recommend. My favorite meal that I had while I was staying in Soho was actually at a place called Thai Diner. And I had been wanting to get here for the last couple of trips that I've been to New York City. I just didn't make it happen, you know, and this time I did because again, it was only 10 minutes from where I was staying. So perfect Thai diner. It's very much giving almost like a Thai tiki bar. Like it was kind of kitschy, but it was cool. And the ambiance was like, there was a vibe there. I really enjoyed it. And so I sat at the bar and There was a lot of people, like other solo diners kind of at the bar, which is perfect. I ordered the cow soy. This is like a bowl of golden curry. And it has egg noodles and chicken thigh and turmeric and a squeeze of lime. And it was it was so fucking good. Mm, It was so good. It was like a warm hug. There's something about coconut curry with chicken. I could be anywhere in the world. Like that dish is going to make me feel so good. Like it's so comforting. Um, I was very pleased with that meal. Pat myself on the back. Like, good job, Ava. You chose a spot that slayed. So if you find yourself in Soho and you really want a comforting bowl of noodles, I highly recommend Thai Diner. Go sit at the bar You'll have a great meal and a good vibe. What more could you want? Okay. Now, the last food recommendation that I have from this trip specifically is pop-up bagels. Now, I am such a fucking millennial. Like, I fully realize that in this moment, and I am owning it. But for some reason, I live for a little bit of hype. Okay? Pop-up bagels, there's some hype there. Pop-up bagels essentially is a collection of stores on the East Coast that make fresh for you bagels and they're only open like on the weekends. So you order ahead and then you go and you pick up your bagels in person. And I think when you look online, the orders are for like a dozen or more But if you're alone, like you don't, don't worry. You don't have to order a dozen bagels. You can actually just go the day of and get in line and you can buy like three at a time. Okay. So that's what I did. First of all, the fact that I ate three bagels is concerning because I am gluten intolerant and they were not gluten-free bagels. I'll just say that. But there's something about a fucking overhyped bagel that just makes me want to wait in line. I think it needs to be unpacked psychologically. Like, why? If I was in my home city, I would never wait in line for a fucking bagel. But yet, I find myself doing this. I do this, I'm not going to say on a regular basis, but like, it's it's been more than twice, okay? I'm happy to report that the bagels are worth the hype. You know, things are popular for a reason. I do believe that. And these bagels are really good. In my three pack of bagels, I got an everything bagel, 
a salt bagel, and a plain bagel. With three bagels, you order one tub of cream cheese. And so their whole thing is like you just rip the bagel and then you dip it in the cream cheese because it's like more of a whipped cream cheese texture. And their flavors are either plain cream cheese or chive or green onion. Yeah. I got the green onion because I'm like, I can't have plain. I can't have plain. Every place that's fucking hype though has this little like they have a catch, right? And the catch of pop-up bagels is that they also offer a limited time cream cheese flavor. Like every couple of weeks, there's a limited time cream cheese flavor. And I've been watching this place on Instagram for a while, okay? Some of the cream cheeses that I am heartbroken that I missed out on include chocolate chip cannoli cream cheese. Oh my God, are you serious? Are you serious? A Frank's Red Hot Cream Cheese, which would basically be like a buffalo dip. Again, I'm pissed that I missed out on that. Oh, and hot honey. They had a hot honey. You know, like when you make um, a hot honey like on a pizza, like spicy, sweet and spicy. Oh, God. So that's what gets you, right? Because they always have the bagels, but they don't always have the cream cheese. And so... (laughs) If you find yourself in New York City, you better look into what cream cheese flavors pop up bagels is serving that week because it's good. Also, everyone in there was having a great time. I will also add that. Like, they're blurring music, they're baking bagels, they're like taking selfies with everyone who's crammed in there, like in this little spot waiting for their bagels. <laughs> it's giving New York, you know? But that really wraps up the dining recommendations. Like I said, taking the pressure off some more casual spots, there's a million options. There's a million places you could go, but those were the places that I went that I enjoyed. Let's talk about tattoo tourism. Now, the whole reason why I was in New York City in the winter time was for a tattoo. And tattoo tourism, I think is pretty fun, right? Like some people travel to see concerts. Some people travel to go to different museums. Some people travel to take cooking classes in all different parts of the world. Another option that I would like to present to you is traveling for tattoos. Traveling for tattoos, totally valid, totally awesome. I have been hyper fixated on tattoos since 2020. Up until that point, I had never had a tattoo. Okay. I spent 10 years working in corporate America, working really hard to maintain a squeaky clean image for a reason that I still don't understand. Okay. But when I left that structure, it was kind of like a domino effect where I started to look at every aspect of my life, everything I've ever done and why or why not? And starting my own business, going on my own, like it gave me this freedom, you know, like I really get to embrace my rebellious side and I can do whatever the fuck I want. Right. So I decided somewhere along the way to hyper fixate on tattoos. I'm like, you know what? I need some of those, but you'll learn very quickly that you don't just want to go get any tattoo. Like there are some really shitty tattoos that you can get. Like some artists don't have the same skill as other artists. Some artists have different vibes than the vibe that you actually want. Like there's actually a lot of research that goes into figuring out where you want to be tattooed and by who. So I have a tattoo that like, it's not good. Okay. (laughs) That's how I learned the importance of really finding an artist that you resonate with. Somewhere along the way, I discovered an artist that I really loved her style. Her name's Mira Mariah. She goes by Girl New York, and she obviously tattoos in New York. I had been following her work now for a few years and decided specifically that I wanted to have a rose tattoo by her. Now, I wanted to have a rose tattoo by her because her drawing style 
is just very kind of freeform and feminine and whimsical in a way. And that's what I wanted this flower to look like, right? And so I started watching. Remember when I told you that we are manifesting original rich bitch experiences and we kicked the year off with a bang, manifesting this tattoo? It's been a journey. It's been a few years that this manifestation has been in the works. So I was watching her flash sheets, looking for a rose. If I'd see one I'd like, I'd reach out and I'd apply through her intake form. Sometimes you get accepted, sometimes you don't. I hadn't been accepted. I think I've applied like five times. Finally, wouldn't you know? Another rose flash comes up. I love it. I want it. I apply for the tattoo and then I got accepted. You guys, I got accepted on Christmas Eve, nonetheless. Okay. So when you were drinking eggnog and sitting by the fireplace, I was doing a bank transfer, making a deposit on a tattoo. I was booking flights. I was, I, you know, it was an exciting Christmas for me. I share this just to say, you know, sometimes the things that you want, they take a while. They take a while. And I feel like when I got accepted for this specific tattoo from this artist I've been wanting to work with, I felt like I won the fucking lottery. I'm not going to lie. I was so beyond excited. So it was really fun to start the year off with this manifestation. And I think it's setting the tone for the year. It's going to be a good year. 2024 is going to be a good one. But my experience was lovely. The artist is lovely. Girl, New York. I love being there. We had a great conversation about art. I love the tattoo. I'm obsessed. You can't see it because I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, but someday you will. And it was just fun. It was just fun. And it reminded me that I really want to surround myself with more creatives more artists. Being around creative people, I think is just so, it's so important. And it's also a reminder that we are all creative, right? Like we are all creative. You might not consider yourself an artist, but you should consider yourself a creative because we are. And I think the more that we nurture that, the easier it is to even align with that term. But I loved it. I love being there. I love the experience. Um, Mira is the sweetest and it was a fun way to start the year. So I wanted to wrap up with a couple of tips for first time travelers to New York City and specifically tips for first time travelers to New York City because the first time I went to New York City, I was so completely overwhelmed. It feels like a place that is intimidating because there's so many options. I mean, down to even airports, like there's multiple, right? It's like, well, where do you fly into? Where do you stay? How do you get around? What's the deal? What's the best time? So I wanted to just provide a few tips for first time travelers to New York City. So the first tip is to consider the weather, right? Like really figure out what time of year you want to be in New York City. If you want to experience the winter, great. Go ahead, November, December, January, February, like knock yourself out. I think personally the best times to visit are the spring and the fall. So in the spring, you know, things are blooming, things are turning green, the grass, the trees. Well, there's not so much grass, but there's a little bit of grass, you know. The trees and the weather is more mild. I think spring is a really beautiful time. Fall is also a really beautiful time. Think September, October, things are cooling down a little bit, but it's not too cold. And it makes walking around more enjoyable. You can also go in the summer, but just be prepared that the concrete in the city, like it feels really hot. The New York City in the summer feels really hot. And also things start to smell a little bit. You know, it's not the cleanest place in the world. There's 
urine all over the sidewalks. Like you can smell it in the summertime. There's trash all over the sidewalks. Like you can smell it in the summertime. So for me, summer is not the best, but if you really want to have like a really like a summer in the city, go for it. But personally, I recommend definitely taking into consideration the weather and then aiming for spring or fall. Along the same lines, depending on the season that you're going to be there, making sure you have the right gear. So if you're going in the wintertime, you definitely need a winter coat, gloves, hat, boots, you get it. Um, but really just taking that into consideration along with having a really comfortable pair of shoes to walk in. And I'm not saying you have to like wear workout sneakers, right? If that's your most comfortable pair of shoes, perfect. But have a pair of shoes that you know you can walk at least a few miles in every single day. Um, because I've had my fair share of blisters in the city and it's not fun. It's really not fun. When it comes to airports, like I said, there's more than one option. There's JFK and there's LaGuardia, and then there's also Newark, but that's not really an option. So I like to avoid JFK at all costs. JFK airport is a fucking nightmare. If you have the option to fly into LaGuardia, so much better. So much better. And they recently redid the Delta wing area and it's so nice it's so clean it's so spacious and upgraded and it just feels good but i honestly avoid jfk at all costs and you should too if you can get a flight into laguardia when it comes to hotels expect to be underwhelmed expect to have a small room we're talking like maybe 200 square feet a lot of people on their first visit to New York City are shocked at like how small the rooms are, but it's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's, it's the most populated place in the country and the rooms are small. The rooms are going to be really small, but that's okay because like I mentioned earlier, you're not going to be spending a lot of time in your room. You're going to be out. You're going to be out in the streets of New York City. So prepare to be disappointed by the size of your room. And <laughs> don't say I didn't warn you because it's, it's giving shoebox, okay? Finally, and perhaps most importantly, give yourself space to decompress. There is so much going on in New York City. Sounds, smells, sights, events, shops, like literally... There's so much going on energetically and it's so much fun. It is so much fun, but I recommend not burning yourself out. Like I have come home from New York city so many times and have needed like a week to recover just from spending time in the city. So if you can be really mindful about incorporating downtime, don't overdo it. And if you need to stay for more days just to like give yourself that time to decompress, do it because it's going to hit you like a wrecking ball. It's a lot of energy. So give yourself downtime, get as much rest as you can before and after your trip and do your best to just regulate your energy while you're there. So with those tips in mind, I think you'll have a great time. I think you'll have a great time in New York City next time you're there. If it's your first time or your hundredth time, there's always something to see. There's always something to discover. And it is objectively one of the best cities in the world. So enjoy it. As I do with all travel talks, I give my time in the city a rating out of 10. And... I think I'm going to give New York City an 8 out of 10. Really strong. Really great. Despite being fucking freezing, you know? So that says a lot. That says a lot. I heart New York City. So I think that's all I've got for you today. It feels so good to be back. Um, I missed you. I hope that you missed me too. <laughs> 
Like I said, a lot of really great new exciting things coming to the show this year. I have a lot planned, all with the goal in mind of being more of who we really are. Self-discovery through travel, through wellness, through lifestyle. I have a personal goal for this year of hitting 100 five-star ratings on Apple and 100 five-star ratings on Spotify. So it would mean so much to me if you take the time to go in and rate the show after you listen and share it with a friend. Share it with a friend who could use a little bit of inspiration, you know? I think at the end of the day, we're all trying to be the best versions of ourselves, trying to be more of who we truly are, living more authentically. And that's my intention with this show is to really bring forward the things that I've found, make me feel more me. And in sharing that, hope that you can find something new that makes you feel like more of who you are. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being on this journey with me. I love and appreciate you and the time you spend with the show. And we'll be back next week. Bye. Listen to the More Pod every Wednesday as I share the things that make me more me and discover a thing or two to make you more you.